So my family was going through my grandmother's old stuff and they found this big pile of fabric. And they thought like, oh, you sew stuff, you can take it, right? And sure, I guess, but a lot of the stuff that she was working with isn't the kind of stuff that I would normally be working with. And some of it was just old bed sheets that got mixed in. But I found this fabric and I thought, oh, that'd make a cool shirt. And I hadn't made like this kind of style of shirt before, a vacation shirt. I think the florals just kind of made sense for it. But the fact that it was black made it a little bit unique for me. Unique enough that I decided, yeah, this is the kind of style of shirt that I want to make. Something short sleeved, good for the summer, which is fitting because it's winter. The design was pretty simple. I just took a shirt pattern that I had from a while ago. Didn't change a whole lot, although I did like make the sleeves short um, and I squared the bottom. I also decided to take away any curvature on the side. I just took it and made it like 100% straight. And I was looking at this other shirt that I had, this other kind of similar style, and took some kind of cues from the way that they had made it. But there were things that they did that I didn't want to do. For example, the shirt was just a back piece and two front pieces, and I decided to add a yoke to the back so that I could have a little bit of movement. I put some pleating in so that it could be kind of more comfortable, more spacious. And for an entirely square bottom, I actually ended up adding a little curvature out just around like the chest and back so that would be like a little bit more mobile. As I make more of these things, you'll very much learn to discover that I am obsessed with adding mobility to the chest and the back. I started with a pattern that I had made for a long sleeve dress shirt, tracing the placket, collar, shoulder, and armhole onto new paper, basically taking everything except for the hem and the side seam. The sleeve, I folded my original pattern in half just to get an idea of how long I wanted the sleeve to be. I ended up adding about an extra inch, and then tracing my sleeve pattern onto paper as well, and then cutting it out. The main difference was that this had to have an interior facing piece, because as the collar folds out, you can't just have like a regular shirt where, you know, it's the inside of the fabric showing. So I had to make a separate interior piece and then a slightly different styled collar something that's a little bit more square and kind of folds over itself in one piece rather than a kind of traditional stand with a folded down collar on top it's almost like it's closer to the lapel of a suit than it actually is to any of the other shirts that i'd made before and that was kind of a little fun experiment for the interior facing piece for the front, I'm taking the pattern for the front of the shirt, tracing the collar in the shirt front and just a little bit along the shoulder, and then melding it together with a curved line. Something that looks smooth and finished from the inside, but is long enough to provide a little bit of extra coverage. In my case, that was about two inches. For the collar, I took the pattern that I made for a stand collar, the kind of portion that wraps around your neck. It's also called a mandarin collar sometimes if you don't have a folding collar on top of it. For the top, I'm making it a little bit taller. It's not going to be perfectly squared. You still want it to be a little bit longer in the center, and that's so that it can fold over itself on the back, creating a little bit of a stand, but still fold into a flat shape on the front. As usual, I wanted to fit more of the chain stitch in if I could. Um, I also found this like old thread with like my grandmother's stuff as well, and generally old thread doesn't last very long. It kind of falls apart, it's a lot weaker but it was like this kind of aged black that I thought worked really well with the aged black fabric that I was working with. And I did a bunch of tests with it and it was strong enough for me to work with it. So I just went with that. And because it has these kind of metallic silver flowers on it, I had this extra silver thread and decided I would do all the construction stitches. So that's just what I call them. I'm not sure if that's like a proper term, but all the stitches that hold the shirt together, but they're not visible from the outside, those were all silver. And then the exterior facing stitches, the ones that are top stitches, those I did with that black thread. So from the inside, you kind of have this like cool view of two different stitches, one kind of complementing each other, brings a little bit of the silver floweriness to the inside of the shirt as well. And then for the front facing portion, most of the time I do that by hand so that I can have a nice finish, one that's a little bit more minimalistic. But for this one, if I do a chain stitch on the front of the shirt, then when it folds over, exposing the inside, it would have a little bit of the chain stitch kind of showing through. I thought that could be really cool. I'm realizing now, learning experience, why this isn't really seen on other things. And that's because I knew this ahead of time, but I decided to go with it anyways. The chain stitch doesn't go over corners well. I've curved it on other pieces that I've done and that's never been an issue, but the sharp 90 degree corner here and here, 
the no, nah, it didn't work. The chain stitch loops kind of either skipped or didn't stay in place. So I actually had to go back in and fix those corners by hand after having stitched in the rest of it. And it wasn't the end of the world, but that's not the kind of thing that would work well on a production line or no most normal finished goods. It was something that really only works for these little experiments that I like to do. And that's okay. I find that by having patterns with no seam allowance, I can choose how I do want to do the seam allowance depending on each project. Get some nice sharp chalk. I make one chalk line one and a half centimeters away from the edge of the fabric and another chalk line right at the edge of the fabric. For curved areas like the armhole, I still use that flat ruler, just moving it along the curve as I go. Also, I had to pattern match for the first time. I've never really had to do that before. I've worked mostly with solid materials or patterns that I didn't really have to be concerned whether they matched up or not. But this one was definitely a lot more, more complex in terms of the pattern matching. I just laid the front pieces of the pattern over each other, and once I cut one of them out, I placed that over the other one before I cut it out, matched that pattern piece with the front of the shirt, so that way when I cut that pattern out, the two of them were lined up and they would overlap but still show the same amount that I needed them to. Another fabric feature that I utilized on the shirt was bias stretch and kind of like bias construction. Um, on the inside of the shirt, you need something to kind of finish that extra facing piece. So I did a bias tape to hold that together, making it from the fabric that I was using. And then I also put the shoulder pieces, the yoke, on the bias as well so that you could have like a little stretch, little mobility. So as I said, I cut the shoulder pieces on the bias. That basically means that they're cut on the diagonal. As we pull across the shoulder piece, we can see that it stretches a little bit, but on the diagonal, it's entirely taut with no give. I cut the bias tape last, making sure that I had enough fabric for it. I just used the ruler. I stitched the bias tape to the interior facing piece with a Singer 20. It's a hundred year old sewing machine that creates a single thread chain stitch. And after stitching them together, I fold it over itself, hiding the raw edge and stitching that down. I created some gathers along the back piece by stitching very loosely along it and then pulling the threads taut. You can be a lot more careful with this, but I was okay if the back gathers weren't 100% perfect. The shoulder pieces were of course connected with the chain stitch as well. I used some pins to hold the gathers in place. If you're wondering about pleats or gathers on the back of a shirt, they're actually pretty common. I also did the buttonholes sideways. Um, normally on shirts, you see them vertical. It's a very, very small thing, but because I didn't care if the pattern shifted side to side, but I did care if the pattern shifted up and down, and by pattern, I mean the pattern on the shirt, it was just a way for me to secure and kind of enforce the fabric from, from moving in a way that I didn't want it to. The top stitching on the shoulder and around the armhole was one that I did entirely by hand. I just, again, I think it looks a little bit neater, uh, but also it's a little bit more hidden. And I kind of like that if someone like looks really closely at it, you can kind of see that it's like a hand done detail, something that's nice and neat, but adds a little bit of character to the garment. I sewed the armholes down with what I believe is called a felling stitch, kind of going in a big corkscrew or spiral. And looking at it from the outside, it's actually very hard to tell that they're there. And then I did the little vent opening at the side of the shirt. Didn't really feel necessary, but like most of the shirts that I looked at for inspiration had vents very similar on the side. One thing that I didn't really pay attention to was I normally fold the side seam of the shirt towards the back. That way the stitching is facing the back rather than the front. There isn't really a right or wrong way to do it. I see a bunch of shirts that go in each direction. So it's, it's something if, that if you decide to do, it's very much up to you, but something that I didn't really think ahead of time on was that the little slit in the side will have a direction based on which fabric is essentially on top. So by folding the bulk of the seam allowance towards the back and stitching that down, the back piece was essentially on top. And that means that for the vent, the back piece is sitting over top of the front piece. I think if I thought a little bit more ahead of time about that, I uh, probably would have done that differently. But it's a small thing, most people probably won't notice. The buttonholes I did by hand, I just, I don't really like the look of the buttonholes you get on a sewing machine. They don't have that same kind of appeal to me. I did use like a mother of pearl button as well and I wanted something that felt a little more elegant to go with it. I created my own buttonhole twist from the two threads that I was using to build the shirt, the silver and the aged black. With the hand stitch buttonhole, you place the needle through the hole that you cut, wrapping the thread around the head of the needle and pulling it up through, creating a series of very small knots. I always use manicure scissors to cut into the fabric to make the buttonholes. I actually find that the very sharp point makes it easy for me to pierce the fabric exactly where I want to. I got these smoked mother of pearl buttons, which I thought would work really well with the silver and the flowers, and did what I've seen called a crow's foot stitch or a lily stitch. 
doesn't really make a big difference, but I do think that it looks a little bit nicer because it's, it's called a lily stitch and, you know, there's flowers on the shirt. They're a lot of extra work in terms of like the amount of time that they take, but for me it is kind of worth it. I kind of like spending more time on each piece and then I get something that I'm a little bit more proud of out of the way because that way it makes me feel like I'm not building up too much of this kind of extra collection of clothing that I don't need. Each piece I become kind of more attached to it because of the amount of time that I spend with it. And I don't know, that's, that's just kind of like a philosophy that I just, I really like when it comes to clothing, you know? Like, you can go to any store, buy as much clothing as you want, the only limit is is the contents of your wallet. But when you spend more time with each piece, not even if you're making it, but if you're just like buying something and you look at all the intricate details and you have that kind of, maybe it sounds cheesy, I don't know, but you have that kind of connection with the person that made it because you're kind of on the same wavelength you're looking for the same thing you're noticing those same details and i think you get more connected to the clothing that you wear because of that and maybe it's not about the quantity of the clothing that you have it's how much you care about the pieces that you do have you know wearing something until you run it into the ground is kind of different to me than wearing something every day because you like it i like back in the in my retail days i made some shirts for one of my customers and he comes to me like two months later he orders like uh, like twice as many shirts as he had the first time because the shirts that I had made for him were the only ones that he was wearing. And I don't know, that like, it meant a lot to me because because you, you know, and you when you sell clothing or whatever or order through like a custom program, it can feel kind of disconnected. But having that moment, having that connection... Um, where someone really likes the things that you've done for them. When, when the two of you, the person that made it, the person that ordered it, when all the people involved just line up perfectly, these pieces can end up meaning a lot to you. And I would so much rather have that than just the overconsumption, the buying everything, the looking at the list of things that you need to buy this holiday season. It's like, I want, I want people to buy the clothing that they like. I want people to to wear things because they want to wear them. It's kind of why I hate like office uniforms because if you're wearing something because you're told to, it feels different. You know, not everyone has to care about the way they dress. Not everyone has to be fashionable, but like you can go to H&M and any other fast fashion retailer and be fashionable now. It's the, the barrier to entry is so much lower. I'd much rather have people care about what they're wearing. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but that is kind of like why I went from working in retail to, to making my own clothes because when I sold suits, the best friends that I made there were the tailors. I was always hanging out with them, trying to get them to teach me how to use the sewing machines. I didn't, I wasn't trained in any of this. I just, I fell in love with it because it was fun and because I had that connection with the people who, who worked on the clothing. And I saw that the things they were doing seemed way more valuable to me than being a salesman. Why would I sell someone a suit when I can make it? I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's just me. But yeah, overall, I mean, I like this shirt a lot. I love the collar. I love the way it feels and fits. The kind of stretchiness from the bias around the shoulders is really nice. I think maybe I would make the sleeves a little bit wider. I didn't really think about it, um, but short sleeves are much, much wider than, uh, than their long sleeve comparisons. It's like if you have skinny jeans, someone could think, yeah, that looks fine whether you like skinny jeans or, or not. But then if you have, you cut off the leg and now they're shorts, it looks weird, you know? like short stuff has to be looser and I didn't really think too much about that and then when I tried adding a like a bell shape essentially to the sleeve it looked kind of funny on my test piece so I decided not to go with that I just made it as straight as possible essentially and as like vacation-y as the shirt might look. I don't know. I, I'm probably going to rock it whenever I want. It just feels kind of fun. I like the black and the silverness together. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I've become really fond of it after making it. This shirt, it's something that, as small as it might be, it, it's, you know, it's vintage fabric. It comes from my grandmother. I think that's really nice. I think that's really cool. To make something out of something old in a way that, that feels to me, at least, it feels very personal. It feels very modern. I think maybe as a society, we're starting to appreciate old things more. And that's why I don't like when thing, like clothing is brand new. It deserves to be kind of broken in. It you know molds the shape of your body when you wear it. It doesn't mold the shape of your body when it sits in a drawer. And maybe because of this, 
I've earned the right to finally use grandmother's sewing shears. The things that it's like, you use my sewing shears for what? No, no, no. No bags of chips this time, grandma. This time, I'm making clothing with it. Uh, shoot, these are in a kind of bad condition. I think clothing can mean as little or as much to you as you want it to. I don't ever want anyone to feel pressured that they have to dress a certain way or have to wear certain things. But I do hope that even if you're not planning on making your own clothing, that now that you kind of see the things that go into making it, you know how to make those decisions in the future and that you know what to look for 